be blessed by the divine on behalf of sky yoga online english meditation group i am gk bharati welcoming you all to today's special lecture our today's special speaker is none other than our master mentor and senior professor balachandran ayya small intro about him he is a retired director department of statistics government of india he had voluntarily retired from his government service to serve with maharishi sky yoga he is into sky yoga for more than 30 years he along with his wife madam jayanti is responsible for spreading vedadriyam all over our country india and also all over the world he was traveled in more than 25 countries and has spread the wings of sky yoga we are very happy to welcome such a great personality to our club today and presently she is doing a service as online for the online english foundation courses and intra special courses and the topic he is going to speak today is when magarishi became cabinet minister what did he do and what all did he do welcome senior professor balachandran ayya the floor is yours thank you very much madam salutations to the divinity salutations to the spiritual master vedadri maharishi and salutations to all the participants of today's program from across the world and thanks to bharati madam for her very kind words i will try to live up to that expectation today's topic is when maharishi became a cabinet minister what did he do what all did he do a very intriguing subject i was given first of all many of us even don't know that he was a cabinet minister also it must be a very very intriguing thing very surprising thing for most of us even those who have moved with him for a very long time that swami ji was also a cabinet minister at some point of time in his life of course most of us were not even born uh, it was in early 1950s and that too even if we were born some of us might be about 70 years now even then they might not have known or they might not have become physically mature enough say at age of 15 or so only we come to know about these things isn't it so unless somebody is 85 or so around that beyond 80 we would not have known what swami ji was at that time and the greatness of swami ji just like mother nature mother nature gives us so much it gives us everything the land water air your beautiful system your brain your five sense organs excellent digestion system things like that you can go on and on saying that the plants for us to survive on this earth everything it gives the mother nature gives but it doesn't tell us quietly it is doing and that's why we don't respect it so all great people without any hesitation they keep giving just like our mother how much she gives to the child she gives her entire life but how much of us recognize that because it comes so obviously to us without asking do we respect that i think sometimes these people these great people the mother the mother nature the, ma- the great masters they should tell us what they are how much they are doing <laughs> then only possibly we may realize otherwise it becomes too late when a mother or father is not there then you understand but it's too late isn't it but unfortunately these people don't they they are so self-effacing they don't come forward and say i've done this 
Whereas many of persons like me, oh, I've done this, I want this, we demand. So one such great personality is Vedadri Maharshi. Unless you might, you might have, unless you read his autobiography, story of my life, or another work I will come, then only we will come to know something about himself. Because in autobiography, they write the truth. That's why you should always read an autobiography, not a biography. But suppose we write something about a biography about Swamiji, we may be telling only those things we know, and we will also like project him in a positive way. Or that's the way we look at it. And we may not be able to look at the truth because of our faith, because of our devotion. So with all of our sincerity, we will not be giving the exact truth. Whereas if somebody, an honest person like Mahatma Gandhi, writes his own autobiography, my experiment with truth, then only we come to know exactly what all went into their mind, what made them what they were, and what are the pitfalls in their life, in their character. You may know that Mahatma Gandhi very honestly says that at the age of 15, when he was married to Kasturba, she was also young, his father is in deathbed, but still he wanted to have a separate time with Kasturba. Who else will write that? Unless a person is like Mahatma Gandhi. Similarly, all of us should try to read autobiographies of great persons. And one such autobiography, even then it will be self-effacing. The good things they will not talk about themselves. Only we people have to find out somewhere. Isn't it? So even if you read between the lines of his autobiography also, we would not have understood this. Many of us may not know that he, became, he was a very, very rich person at some point of time in his life. He had thousand people working under him. And he had, uh, in his village, he had a, a big, palace, big building with two uh, cars. One car was always parked in his house with full patrol so that any pregnant woman could become serious, they will be taken to General Hospital in Chennai, which is about 30 kilometers in those days. You know how difficult it would have been. And then he had bought some 10 acres of ground where he wanted to build an ashram and an age, uh, a, person, uh, a place for the aged, place for the orphans. All these plans were there. He was so rich. But those who know him after that, he will never talk about those things. We would never know that he was rich and he knows something about business, something about... We thought, okay, he's a sannyasi. And so he may not know what problems we face in our life. But he has gone through all the problems in life which we might not have even thought of. Born an extremely poor family. With eight children, he being the eighth, the seventh was a boy died early. The six were elder daughter, elder sisters, and an extremely poor family. And he had to drop his education. As they, I think many of that we will be knowing that he dropped out, of, dropped out of school at the age of eight, class three. That was his formal education. And then had to work for 18 hours a day just to keep the family take adding some amount of food. And then he moves to Chennai and does so many things. So we all know that. But at the same time, he was so kind. He wanted to know why this humanity is suffering so much. He is God. Is there a God, kind God, who will do all these things? So is poverty man-made or God-made or nature-made? If it is man-made, why, why can't we solve it? So these are the things which are going on in his mind. And he wanted to know what the divinity is. And in spite of the fact that he didn't have time to study anywhere, he went on questioning and then trying to get answers as he was doing all types of odd jobs. So that's why in USA, in Colorado University, when he was asked, Maharishi, where did you study? Which university did you study? <laughs> Maharishi smiled. He said, I'm a dropout in class three. I've not seen a university, but I studied in the city of universe. That means in a very practical life, in the universe, as we are living, he started, he was constantly educating himself. Okay, that sort of education we should absorb. 
that's called intuition. Tuition from inside. You know, we are used to tuition from outside. So this is one of the techniques from which teaches through meditation and all that. Okay. So what I wanted to tell you is there are so many facets of Vedanta Maharishi about which we are not even aware of. Only when we will come to know about all that, then we will understand how practical his problems, his solutions are. We think it's this, uh, this is a utopian, idealistic, because he does not know our problems, which what we are facing every day. Okay, fine. So these were, as I told you, early 1950s, when India had got independence just about three, four years back. So we were having colonial rules for so many um, centuries, and then we become independent. Just before that, the world war came to an end with Japan being bombarded. And uh, in India itself, so much of commotion, you know, the partition and so many millions of people moving from the new Pakistan and East Pakistan, West Pakistan, India, and so much of displacement, so much of problems, so much of poverty. It is under these conditions that our Maharishi becomes a, a cabinet minister. Okay, is it possible for me to link uh, my existing slides? Uh, madam, is it possible? Can you, uh, do you know how to go about that? Sir, uh, is there anyone, somebody? Is it? You want to? Uh, sir, if can, you want to sir. see the slides, is it possible? Okay, sir. If it is uh, possible, okay, otherwise I'll go without that. Sir, I think uh, if, uh, you can just... I think there is a provision for you, no? Or whether you yeah, want I to change that. that. But then, you know, it says that uh, I should, yeah, okay, yeah, yes. You I can see. just, yeah, I just try that. Yes. You can just uh, uh, press, the, press it, sir. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so that, that. You, you can. Why it is not coming? Is it coming on the screen now? Are you able to see something? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, we already have done. Be blessed by the divine. Is that okay? Okay. Yes. Okay, just a moment. Yeah. Is it uh, the title is clear? When my when my yes, became a cabinet minister. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, so that was the situation. And there was so much of expectation from the uh, millions and millions of people because it's an independent country now and they wanted so many things. Suddenly, their expectations arise, you know. So this was a very, very difficult situation. And uh, Maharishi, on one of these days, was just sitting down. And then many times, you know, he goes into a different level. We all know that. So he was in one such mood. And then, yes, then suddenly his idea this comes about the comforts gifted by our ancestors. So he thinks that I'm in a free country now, but how many people must have lost their lives? For how, how much of problems they might have faced? Because of that, only I'm enjoying this comfort of freedom or independence. And how many scientists have worked? So today we have uh, so many things in our hands are produced by science. How many scientists must have toiled for all that? In the food, how many varieties? How many mothers must have toiled for hundreds of years to get your idli on your plate or uh, hamburger in your uh, this thing? We just say that, okay, I just throw money and get it. But if you really think of how the whole thing must have started, the table, the spoon, the buildings. So if you think then thousands of thousands of people, not only the present generation, but right from the time human beings came into the earth, because of all their toils, because of their sufferings and their research, their sacrifice, that today we are enjoying so much. So he was thinking of all those great people who have suffered because of whom we are enjoying this comfort. See, that is the greatness of, uh, we don't think, uh, we don't go so much back. We always think of, I'm not saying we means I'm not including you, I'm talking about myself, okay? <laughs> that 
what is it that I have not got? Why should I do something to the society? After all, the society is not caring for me. This is how we generally normal people look at it. But see, the great, great masters look at what all they have got and you are all responsible for all that. I think this is the totally 180 degrees change in our approach that makes all the difference in our uh, lives, you know, thinking. So he was in that ecstatic mood, thanking all those people who have worked because of which we have got this. So that was one thing. And then he was also looking at the nature, how nature is so bountiful that thousands and thousands of species are there on the land, in the forest, in the oceans, in the lakes, in the air, uh, flying around, how many types of species of plants are there. And everything, nature is able to provide everything, the food it wants, the mate it wants, the happiness it, it enjoys, it is able to have the uh, is able to lead a very beautiful life and so is human beings. So how nature, mother nature, self-effacedly doing all these things. So he was again in ecstasy, being one with nature. So many talks about the delta wave and all that, isn't it? You become one with that. So he was in that ecstatic mood, thanking the society, thanking the nature and enjoying that. But immediately, something in the chat box, let me see. Yes. Yes, so happiness in built in nature. So thinking of all the sacrifices of the people, our ancestors, our forefathers, and also thinking about the bountiful nature of nature itself doing so much. But then suddenly he also becomes very, very concerned that when so much is there by humanity as well as by nature, why is it that today millions of people are not having enough to eat? Why so much of sadness? Why so much of disease? Why so much of poverty? Not getting even pure water. And why people totally, uh, absolutely, with lack of education, lack of health, lack of guidance? Why I'm so much of in, uh, fightings? Why all this? So these masters, suddenly they are in ecstasy and suddenly they go through the pain because when somebody else is in pain, they are able to feel that. Whereas we think of pain only if it is for us or for our close relatives, isn't it? Whereas for him, anyone suffering, just like Valadar said, when a plant is, uh, is not blooming properly, he becomes sad. <laughs> you see, they can become one with anything, with everything. Because they are saying the same divinity everywhere. So he also goes, goes into a very, very pensive mood that why so much of poverty, illiteracy and all that. And then he also thinks about the power of the thought force. How sitting in just one place, I'm able to think of the entire nature. I can think of the cosmos, so huge. And in the next moment, I'm able to think of electron, proton, become the smallest to the smallest. So is it that my our thought force is so big that even the universe is smaller than that? Or is it that my thoughts are so flexible that it can take all shapes and forms? Just like we say, God can do all that, isn't it? Even our own thought is able to do that. So, so then he says that, okay, if I put some good thought, even if it is not being carried out by me, it will go and impinge on the other minds. And then it may even come true. So it is, he's in such a beautiful state of mind. Okay, so it is at that time, something suddenly radical changes happens in his life. So when he's in such a mood, maybe he was in Budwan Jiri or Chennai, a group of people come to him. And then they show a, a sheet for him to see. 
So he reads that, and that is an application to file a nomination for for election to be a, 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 a minister or a member of parliament. So that is the form they show. And then they look at him. They all want that such a person should, should be elected and then so that they can have a very good government. Okay, so they look at him, but they don't talk to him. They, they, they feel to ask such a great man to join politics, which is nowadays meant for dirty people. But at the same time, they want he should do something about it. So he reads it and then he looks at their faces. He's able to understand. You know, the, the best way of communication is silence. <laughs> Nobody's talking a word, but a lot of things are going on in between. <laughs> Isn't it? And so he understands. So then he, under he thinks that, okay, it is his duty that this country has given me so much, so I should do something in return. So that is why I think this call has come to me to join politics. Though he wanted to do so much in spirituality, but when there's a demand for the public, by the public, and to do something to the public, he says, okay, I will follow, follow that order. And so he signs it and gives it back to them. The rest of it, it goes and then um, he becomes a Rajya Sabha member. Rajya Sabha is a state of council. So there are, I don't know how much of you are familiar with that. In the parliament, we have the lower house and then we have the upper house. So upper house is called Rajya Sabha, a state of a council of ministers, state of council, and then the lower one, council of states. And the lower one is the usual parliament which you're familiar with. So he is uh, he has applied for a nomination in Rajya Sabha. And because he is standing, his name is nominated, other candidates, uh, they don't fight because they know that he's a great man. So unopposed, he doesn't join any politics, I mean, any, any party as an individual, just like suppose Abdul Kalamji, he stands for election, automatically he'll be elected, isn't it? It doesn't matter which, it doesn't have to belong to a party. They know that they're all great masters who will do only good service to the society. So similarly, Maharishi, get unopposed, he gets elected and he becomes a, a member of parliament in Rajya Sabha. Then it goes on. So. Next slide. So he becomes a minister. Then it's a, it's a government with a lot of expectation. It is, I think, Jawaharlal Nehru's time he becomes a prime minister. So I think it was in that time. So much of expectations from people. And then a cabinet is formed. So in those days, you know, they're very, uh, people were all very dedicated to do something for the country, such were the political leaders. So they were not bothered whether it's an opposition or this or that. So they want to do something, uh, something for the country. So uh, 12 ministers were formed. And one such minister is our Veladri Maharshi. So a man who wanted to be a, a spiritual master, he becomes a, a cabinet minister. Okay. See, they're ready to take on anything for the sake of public. They're not bothered about their personal interests. Okay, then what happens? So then, uh, so immediately the cabinet, the cabinet ministers, they sit together and they say, yes, now we have to do something for the country. Only then they understand the seriousness, the difficulties which they're facing in uh, administration at the national level. Why? Just a few years back, till then we were ruled by the Britishers and the British government had set up a government where it was only for exploitation. How to take more money from this uh, from this country? How to keep the people who are here always uh, under uh, I mean under subservience to us? So only that way the entire administration, whether you go to the taluk office or you go to police, you go to anything, the legal system, everything is so much a red tapeism. That progress will not be there. They will all be depending only on the Western, on the you know, British rulers. So that was the setup. 
and that setup which is outmoded with negativities and then suddenly to work for the ambition of the country how difficult it could be so they see this and at the same time the expectation from the public is so high earlier the expectation was not there in the public so it doesn't matter whatever the administration was but now but now the expectation has risen the problems have become more and so administ the cabinet feels the pain of that and the cabinet itself they want to do so much so much dedication so you can understand the situation in which this uh, cabinet ministers were and they didn't know how to start off because they don't have an experience it's a new independent country teeming millions for poor so then what they do is they all sit together and then they decide just that all of us will not be able to get a solution so what we should do is we should take opinion because it's a, it's a democracy so from people let us take opinions so they advertise in newspapers and uh, write to religious leaders who are very magnanimous type of people such such uh, religious leaders or not fundamentalists who want to do service to the society so to such leaders they write out to rich people they write out they write to, uh, write to the industrialists well meaning people great professors who have done so much uh, service and uh, scientists all sorts of people who matter they write to them and then they ask for ideas what are the problems the society is facing and then what solutions based on their experience so they are writing for that and thousands of letters are pouring and then from public also they they were they have asked what are the type of what problems you are facing etc etc so you know thousands and thousands of letters coming and the types of letters were very very different from one to the other yeah so so they put their the plans for good governance so that's how they proceed okay but they expected that some certain people will give some good opinions yes very good opinions came about very detailed analysis was also given by some of the experts in various fields but also there were people who were not even able to run their own families but you know they can find out for they will all sorts of i mean uh, shouting at them writing bad things all those things were there so they collected all of them and then they went into a deep research and a constant conversation they wanted to identify what the problems were and how to go about solving them so one of them but some of him said what he felt was that all these ministers they come for 5 years isn't it even if they are elected another 5 years so constantly the ministers are changed even if they are same government and if the government changes the whole set changes so everyone is there only for 5 years in the national uh, arena 5 years is a very small period now personal life 5 years is a reasonably big period but for the countries 5 years is a very small period so there is no continuity there is one set of ministers now for next 5 years some other ministers come the continuity may not be there because the um, ideas ideologies understanding of problems etc are so different so while the administration goes on but the permanence of the plans are not there so every few years leaving some people don't stay even for 5 years so all those things are happening but even though they are for a very very temporary period whatever they do because the power they have even one this is one wrong decision can impact the society for tens and tens of years isn't it so they understood that and still they said okay so we have say five years only so within this five years whatever we have to do it has to have a very positive impact so having a long term plan perspective planning they say so the middle term plan five years short term plan one year what we do next year next year and then a perspective plan next 10 years 15 years happen after 15 years how india should be how the poverty level should have come down how much of science and technology we could take to villages so it is with that broad mindedness so they started 
planning. So some of the schemes which they immediately thought of was begging. So much of begging was there, people were, I, I, I don't know, even now, so much of begging in India. Imagine 50, 70 years back. You may be begging maybe due to so many reasons, because of old age, because of disease, because of lack of education, or even sheer laziness. But you could see that wherever you find, there are beggars everywhere. So Maharishi said that when nature has been so bountiful, how can you tolerate this type of begging? If today we don't get our lunch or dinner at proper time, how much suffering we'll undergo? But these people, for their lives, they don't get adequate food. I think one experience of Maharishi I would like to share. Of course, he had seen poverty even right from birth. That was there. But then once he comes at the age of 18, he comes to Chennai and starts working in the post office. So I think when he was about 22 or so, He's waiting in the bus stop. His uh, chapel is uh, torn away. So he can't buy a new one. So he goes to the cobbler in front and asks him to repair, mend the chapel. As the beggar, as the cobbler, as he was mending it, Pidadri Maharishi, a young boy, a pretty young man. So he looks at him. His stomach is so gone inside, you know. So he asked him, did you not take breakfast? He says, I have not even taken dinner, last dinner also. But then only he realizes how much of poverty is there. And you know, this young boy, young man, he immediately takes a decision that I unless I also go through the same experience, I will not be able to understand the psychology. And I can't help them in reality. So this young boy immediately decides that from today evening, I will not take dinner just to feel the pain of hunger. So only when such people plan for removing hunger, you know, it will work. Because I know I've been working in government of India, as she has introduced. So when we talk about uh, removing poverty or uh, hunger, we discuss it over uh, lunch from Ashoka Hotel, five-star hotel, the food comes to us, and then we want to see how to remove hunger. <laughs> So what type of planning will be there? So uh, Swamiji has a new way of, what, uh, I'm not saying every administrator has to undergo uh, poverty to understand. No, I'm not saying that at all. Don't mistake. But Swamiji wanted to go through, because he wanted to be a common man, understand these problems at that age, young age itself. So from that time, he never took dinner in his life. Only when somebody forced, I mean, forced he may take a glass of milk or once in a while. So that was it. Okay. So naturally, now that he was more than 40 years, 1952, so, and also became a, power, a powerful minister. So they thought that the first scheme they should take up is eradication of begging. So how do we go about it? It was a huge problem. So then they all take a decision that for the state, let them use, we have what is called dharmashalas that is free chow trees were built. So those free chow trees will be made use of for housing these beggars. But what about food and all and uh, giving them job? So then they decided that so many uh, religious institutions, they have so much of assets and they're not being utilized. So making use of whatever is required for temple administration, yes, that will be provided. But so much of money gets accumulated in certain temples and they're being misused. So they say that the surplus assets, they can be made use of for removal of eradication of begging or removal of hunger. After all, that is what temples are meant for, removing their pains and then taking them to higher level. When somebody is hungry, hungry, how can you think of God? Is it not? So that was a justification without at any way, in any way, not stopping their usual with faith and all those pujas or whatever they have to do, without stopping that, not interfering in the religious, this thing, only using the surplus um, assets for this. So that a beautiful scheme was done. The, 
uh, and then next one hand to hand powders okay begging can be removed but they should be given some work you know those who are uh, healthy but they were uneducated for such people if they are really old if they are really diseased or um, having said disease they can't work yes they should be provided free food but free food should not be for everyone and then it will become lazy the country cannot progress so not only food should be provided shelter should be provided but if they are able bodied depending on their educational qualification their physical strength their mental ability certain what should be given to them they should be protected so they start a scheme called hand pound rice kai kutla rice so hand pound rice is an extremely good uh, 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 nourishing rice it has got so much of fiber that your health can drastically improve by that the right amount of insulin is produced and that is taken diabetes many of the diabetic problems can be stopped by or reduced by this hand pound rice so it is such a healthy thing but now we are using machine polishing so some people who got that machine they become rich but we don't get proper food healthy food is not there and many people are unemployed so to give provide health oh, i i forgot to tell you so he was given two portfolios as a cabinet minister he was made cabinet minister for health and uh, cabinet minister for economics i think I forget the name of that okay uh, when i remember it i'll tell you so he was made responsible for two portfolios yes i think on economics or finance or something like that yes so hand pound rice so by that they calculated that about 400000 people can be immediately employed and many villages they can produce they don't have to come to cities in villages itself where the fields that can be produced and then uh, wherever required it could be provided free free uh, food can be made available to the people who are deserving like that at just one stroke they did a beautiful scheme for removing the beggary or at least working towards it you may not be able to remove just by one scheme but there was a very very positive scheme by this cabinet team of, of course monetary was a very important input so beggary and also unemployment so these two uh, areas they found a solution for that let me find out i don't know whether i am running short of time in that case we can get oh it's 726 yes so what we will do is they won't be able to continue uh, complete this because he has done so much so maybe uh, we will stop here we we'll continue maybe in the next week if the sunday uh, we'll see that let us try to understand the amount of work mercy has done but at least today what we realize is how serious he had taken anything which comes to uh, his hand for the sake of society now uh, thanking you all for giving this excellent opportunity to talk about somaji's life uh, i'm grateful for the organizers for having provided me this opportunity and also for those of you who are participating in this we could have an interaction for some time so questions will be there in your minds you would like to share so i stop here i would uh, request bharti ji to organize for the question and answer session thank you all for your valuable namaste be blessed by the divine ji samrit that was indeed an interesting and great speech sir thank you very much sir that is the topic when magarshi became a cabinet minister he was just thrown light on so many that the way how he had helped us and all uh, many things even i didn't know and so it's news to me it's very great a very great speech he made sir But dear friends now the floor is yours you can just uh, ask any questions or if you have any doubts also you can you are free to discuss with our master you just raise your hands you will be unmuted it's question and question and answer time now maybe you can unmute all also whatever whoever wants they can unmute and speak um, there is a choice in the this thing if you go to the 
participants and uh, into the mute all there's a choice and do you see that uh, you can I'll just see sir. yes ask call yes i am doing i i have just uh, you have done that sent a message asking everybody to unmute yeah they can just unmute and then uh, speak yes. i think feel free it's about our swamiji's life not talking you're not talking about philosophy here <laughs> okay this kind of information we haven't heard from anywhere. Uh, actually, Magarishi is a cabinet minister. It is a, a new kind of information. I, we feel, I feel very much happy. Then I want to ask one question. This uh, hand-bound rice and uh, this brown, ice, brown rice is the same. We are getting brown rice from uh, stores, no? These two are, are the same or different? So to tell you honestly, I also don't know. See, we belong to this. <laughs> only when I read about this for this lecture, so then only I came. Oh, I don't know if somebody, some nutrition person is there, we would also like to be educated. <laughs> yes. yes if somebody who knows about it, uh, we'll be very happy to get that information. So the question is, is the brown, brown rice, is it same as hand pound rice or not? Yeah. That's a question to be asked to that uh, shop. Okay. Uh, they will say. Okay, yes. both, is it? So we need both. To... No, what okay. if it is not polished, it is brown rice. It doesn't mean it is hand pound. I think there is a big difference. Okay, thank you. Thank you. One more question. One more question. Mic is not working. For the My mic is not working. He's saying, but you see, then this must be something wrong in your side because if others can speak, you have got to check, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Jim. You have got to check whether um, something is wrong in your connection, because here everybody is able to do that. Oh yes, it's on my end. Correct. Okay. Okay, Jim. Sir, I want to ask one more. Oh, yes, continue, madam. Yeah. Yes, uh, Magrishi told about that child rearing. No, we have to uh, uh, rear the child in common place. So, mother should give all the child to the uh, this. Uh, no, okay, wait a minute. Let us not discuss about that now. Okay, okay. now we will discuss about the uh, points which okay. I have spoken now. Okay, because okay. he has got so many ideas on so many things. I don't want this to be dived. Maybe we'll okay. be discussing. Others will uh, give yeah. the treatment to the. That's why, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, Magarishi has told in his meditation itself, he's uh, just uh, added the uh, words. Uh, that is, uh, every politician should be spiritually inclined. That is, they should be spiritually enough so that they can uh, just understand uh, about the people, uh, what they need exactly, how they can come up and all. And uh, if only they are spiritually good uh, politicians, they can do a lot. Uh, that is, if the bad exploit, it won't come there at all. Anyway, we will not discuss now. That's okay. a, because okay. that will take a separate lecture. Okay. okay. Today, what we have limited time. Uh, okay. We will just any of anything which is connected with what we discussed today. We will have that as a. Is it okay, uh, Rajati, madam? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, okay, fine. Yeah. Anybody else? I think Jim has given something in the chat box. Uh, you can check the chat box also, madam. Ah, yes, sir. Uh, uh, anyone okay. who lives in the region, you would like to meet. Okay, let me read it. Sorry, let Jim uh, Blackstein. For future view, is this? Madam, I, will, I will read. Uh, please. Oh, okay, sir. Okay. Jim Blackstein has written. The earlier, Sarala Madam has written excellent lecture. Thanks, thanks for that. Uh, hello from USA, Mr. Balachandran and friends. My mic is not working. Okay, that is working now. Thanks to you for the English lecture. We will be in Alia. The first week in September, most welcome. We look forward to meeting everyone there. We will also spend a month uh, exploring Kerala. Very good. Anyone who lives in the region, we would like to meet. Yes, we can meet there. Yes, it's on my end. Thank you. Fine. Is this lecture going to be archived for future? Yes. All these things are recorded and uh, it will be available in YouTube. We will inform you in the same group itself. We will inform you. Yes. All of our lectures, whichever is recorded and we can view it. We can hear it. Hear it. Uh, later, I'll give you the uh, link also. Okay. Thank you.
yes sir. anybody else yes sir i want to tell one thing sir shall yes. i yes anybody else yes raj madam you can go ahead Yes, sir. You have told about that eradication of begging. I in that the exploitation is also the reason, sir. Is it so, sir? Exploitation and laziness and wasting the natural resources is also the reason. Yes, yes. So, so how many factors are there? Yes. You have told that thing. That's why. I... Yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Dear friends, anyone else? Any questions from others? From Lakshmi. Bal ka bala modern. Yes. Bal ka bala modern ma. This is uh, Kala Kala Yuvaraju from Sacramento, USA. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. The point that Maharishi has said that religious institution should um, help out to reduce the poverty. If this has been made a law and if be done by each country and entire world the poverty would have been zero today i believe it's such a marvelous it's a, a thought that uh, is so beautiful should have been uh, implemented i believe yes. that's all my thoughts that i wanted to share today right. yes, yes. Um, be blessed. later we will see how much was implemented and all that we'll come to that right now the cabinet has met they're taking some decisions okay I think mm -hmm. this story cannot be done in 30 minutes. I will extend it. We'll have it <laughs> also next Sunday. We'll continue this. Okay. So Thank be, you, Aya. Be tuned for that. <laughs> Does Lakshmi Pranir have given a comment in the chat box? Hello, madam. This is Lakshmi from Fremont, California. It was very interesting. I had not known um, Maharishi's, this cabinet minister, but I'm looking forward to hear more every week. So will this be the recurring every... Uh, Sunday morning, U.S. time, Pacific yeah, time, I, India I time. We'll continue it. Now that uh, people are all uh, interested and uh, <laughs> curious, we will continue. Yes. Thank you very much. Wow. Was Come originally on. planned, but now I think public, on public demand, we will do that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Wow. And also tell others that uh, this is not, uh, this is nothing to do with Brahmanyana Manda. They don't have to be worried. It will be something very interesting about a great man. Okay. Anyone within or without, our, even though they are not exposed to our system also, they can learn about some great man. What are all the things they have tried, you know? And it's our own, our own uh, society, our country, our people. Okay, so please, you can tell others. Thank Just you, Kala ma'am and Lakshmi ma'am. And also thank you, Mr. Jim. You have said you will be increasing uh, the number of participants by telling others how that they are going Thanks. Thanks. Thank you so much. Anyone else? Okay, I think if uh, we no can conclude to today. Yes, we can conclude. Uh, thank you, Professor Balchandranaya, for your great speech. And also, I thank all the participants for your active participation. And dear friends, we have meditation daily, morning 6 a.m. and evening 6.30 p.m. Egypt Standard Time. You please do participate and get the bliss, enjoy the bliss. Also, every Sunday, we have uh, a special speech by special speakers. Uh, please do join. And as uh, Jim has said, we hope we will be getting more number of people uh, joining this uh, uh, group uh, so that uh, it will be still more, so that it will, they, they will make it still more interesting. Thank you all. Be blessed by the divine. Okay, thank you all. Namaste. We'll meet again next Sunday. Yes. Be blessed. Okay. We'll close the session now.
our today's special lecture program is over we will meet again tomorrow to participate in group meditation